your brothers and sisters in Christ. What Jesus are you looking forward to this, this Christmas? That might seem like an odd question. What Jesus are you worshiping? What Jesus are you expecting? What Jesus are you looking forward to? But really, it, it's a very important question. It's an important question because there are a lot of Jesuses out there. There's a lot of different definitions of who Jesus is. Even the disciples had to deal with that. When Jesus asked, who do the people say I am? There was many different responses that the disciples came up with, that maybe he was a prophet raised from the dead, or he was John the Baptist, or he was a great teacher. So I guess the question is important for us as well. What Jesus are you worshiping? What Jesus do you look to for help? What Jesus do you pray to? Who is Jesus to you? And the reason why it's important, because there is only one answer to that question. There can only be one Jesus, and that is Jesus as he reveals himself in the Bible. That Jesus who came at Bethlehem, who laid in a manger, is the same Jesus who went to a cross and died and then rose again on Easter. And it will be the same Jesus who will come again to judge the living and the dead. And so we need to know, who is he? Is he someone who wants you to try your hardest? And as long as you try, and as long as you try to be a good person, and you do mostly everything right, when he comes again, he'll take you to heaven. Is Jesus one who looks at you in a judgmental way, saying, you better do this or else. If you aren't perfect, if you don't, do what I tell you to do if you aren't a good person because it's all up to you to be saved. Do you look at Jesus and think that he is someone that you can accept? That it's up to you to accept him? He's simply knocking at the door. He's giving you every opportunity, but if you don't accept him, if you don't let if you don't open your heart and let him in, you won't be saved. But those who have decided, those who have chosen to believe, well, then you are the ones who are saved. Thing is, those are all different Jesuses. All expect different things. All expect you to do something to earn your salvation. And the thing is, that's not what the Bible tells us about Jesus. Jesus doesn't expect you to be perfect. He demands it, but he doesn't expect it from you because he knows you can't do it. He doesn't expect you to earn your salvation because he knows you've already failed. He doesn't expect you to open your heart to accept him into your life because he knows you can't. In fact, it's impossible because we're born enemies of God, hostile to God. We can't please God, nor do we even want to. That's not the Jesus that we worship. That's not the Jesus that came at Bethlehem on Christmas. That's not the Jesus who died on the cross and who rose again from the dead. And it's not the Jesus who will come again. And if those are the Jesuses that you are following, well, then that's bad news. That's not good. Because it's not Jesus and... There's only one, the right one. So who is he? Well, he is a God who does demand perfection, but like I said, he knows you can't do it. And so he came. That's why he came at Christmas. It's because he had to come to save you. He had to come to save me. He had to do all the work. This is the same Jesus who lived perfectly in our place. And he did it because he needed to. This Jesus doesn't ask you to earn anything because he knows you can't, and that's why he did it all. 
That's why he went to a cross, because he had to pay for all the mistakes, all the imperfections that we created. And then he rose again from the dead to show us that he had accomplished everything. And that he had given his work to us as if we had done it. So that when he comes again, he's not going to tell us to leave or to go to hell. Instead, he's going to say, welcome home. But there will be many on that day who will say, Lord, Lord, didn't we fill in the blank? Didn't we preach your word? Didn't we help all these people? Didn't we do miracles? And Jesus is simply going to say, I never knew you. And that's because they didn't worship the one true Jesus. They worship their, their form of Jesus, their desired Messiah. How can we make sure that we don't get sidetracked and that we don't create a Jesus of our own? We listen to him. We let his word speak. And even if it doesn't make sense, we let God be God. And we follow him. We listen to him. And if he tells us something, we just leave it to be true. And when we allow God's word to rule our lives, to show us who Jesus really is, then we will not be wrong. We will be following Jesus the one and only, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth, to save you and me from our sins, so that we could be with him forever in heaven. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for sending your Son, and thank you for making sure we know who he is. Thank you for giving us his word so that we can be certain that we are following your one and only Son, who did all the work for our salvation. May we always be reminded that he did all the work so that we do not try to take any credit for our salvation, so that we don't get sidetracked and lose sight of how we are saved. Thank you for all of your salvation. Thank you for your grace and your mercy. Thank you for, what, thank you for making Christmas wonderful and Easter spectacular, but also thank you for making us look forward that judgment when we will go home to be with you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And may the Lord bless your day.